And uh, here's another interesting example of how to handle the Doppler shift. Here, what's happening, we have a, uh, a source with a frequency of 500 hertz moving at 20 meters per second towards a big wall right here. There's an observer moving away from the source, moving towards the wall. And let's say that for some reason he's shielded from the sound coming from behind so he doesn't hear the source as it's moving this way, but it does hear the sound waves as they bounce off the wall and come back. So the first question is, the wall is not moving, does that make any difference? How does that work? So the waves are bouncing off the wall, coming back, and if, there is, uh, if the wall is not moving, then the frequency does not change as it's reflected off the wall and the wavelengths are not changing. But now the effect of this is that the observer appears to be moving towards the sound, so it would be the same situation as if the observer turned around and moved towards the source and heard the sound is as he's approaching the source coming this way. So now we need to figure out how to use the equation, the plus and the minus in the equation, to figure out what the actual observer hears, what frequency he hears. So again, start with the equation that the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times the velocity of sound in air plus or minus the velocity of the observer and here plus or minus the velocity of the source in the denominator. Again, we're going to plug in all the numbers and wait, don't put the signs in yet. So this is equal to 500 hertz times the velocity of sound in air is given to be 340 meters per second and the velocity of the observer is 5 meters per second the velocity of the source is 20 meters per second I don't put the signs in yet alright now let's start with the velocity of the source in the denominator as the source is moving towards the observer the observer would expect to hear a higher frequency because what happens is as the sounds are being made by the time the next wave is made the source has moved causes the waves to be closer together than they otherwise would be if the source was not moving so shorter wavelengths means higher frequency remember the equation that the velocity equals frequency times wavelength so the frequency is equal to the velocity divided by the wavelength if the wavelengths get smaller the frequency gets larger so, we expect to hear a higher frequency because the source is moving to the right towards the observer. So, what sign do I need here to make this number a bigger number? A bigger number can be obtained by getting a smaller denominator. A small denominator means I need a negative there. Alright, what about the observer? Notice, even though the observer is moving away from the source, he's not hearing the sound coming from the source, he's hearing the sound that's being reflected off the wall, and so he's moving towards the sound, and since he's moving towards where the sound is coming from, because it's reflected, he's going to hear the wave, the waves coming quicker as he's moving towards the source, which means he appears to see shorter wavelengths. Shorter wavelengths, again, means higher frequency. So he's going to hear a higher frequency by moving towards the sound as the sound's reflecting off the wall. So what, num what sign do we need here to make this number a bigger number? Because he's going to hear a higher frequency. So we need a positive in the or a plus in the numerator to make the numerator a bigger number to get this to be a bigger number and now we got the signs correct so the frequency observed in this case is going to be 500 Hertz times 345 divided by 320 and let's find out what that number is so we have 500 times 345 divided by 320 and we get 539 Hertz in this case so, here we threw a little curveball at you, but if you follow what I just said, it's not that hard to figure out. Again, it's all about finding the proper signs by taking the right interpretation of how this situation causes the frequency, the frequency to change because the source is moving towards the observer and the frequency to change because the observer is moving towards the sound. So, as he's moving towards the sound, he's seeing shorter wavelengths and a larger frequency. Okay. And that's how you do a problem like that.